She is the author of The New Rules for Blondes. You may have also seen her on Red Oaks on Amazon. And her stand-up album just debuted at number one on iTunes. It is called Seen Better Days. We're gonna talk a little bit more about it afterwards. Please give it up for Selena Kopic. All right, I'm a little bit embarrassed to admit it, but I will, that I, when I was in college, I bought and devoured and lived by the rules. <laughs> Do you guys remember that dating book? It was basically like, be a cunt and be busy. <laughs> and I needed these tips. I tend to be very available and very nice. <laughs> and it doesn't fucking do you any good. Don't do it. Oh my God. So I remember during study abroad in college, I was living in London and I was having no luck with men because British men are fucking pussies. But anyway, story for another time. Um, but I, I bought the rules and I was like, oh my God, this is, the, this is it, Selena. Just be unavailable. Be a creature unlike any other. And, you know, like... Uh, just all these things and also always look good always look good like they said you never know when you're gonna meet the guy so always look good you know and and i i was raised by a wasp mother so i did sort of already know that um so i for years and years i was like always look good you never know who you're gonna meet you know or even bump into an ex-boyfriend you want to look like life is good you know so i always tried to look my best and after years of this i was like fuck it i'm tired and my hair is breaking from curling irons. You know, like, some days you gotta give the hair a day off. So I kind of just stopped bothering, and I think I grew out of some vanity. And uh, wouldn't you know, that is the one time that I ever met a hot guy on the Amtrak train from Boston to New York right after Thanksgiving. Oh, I, like, I, I've ridden that train a million times. I grew up in the Boston area. I ride Amtrak Boston to New York all the friggin' time. And every other time I'd look great and been like, I'm ready for a train romance. And never, never. <laughs> you don't meet him in the dining car, you know, nothing. <laughs> so finally, this one time a couple years ago, I'm sick as a dog and I'm like, I'm not putting makeup on, okay? I feel like shit. I'm gonna wear sweatpants. I always wear a bra. I mean, I'm not somebody who wears no bra. Like, I got A cups, I gotta have something, you know. Um, <laughs> But I'm just, I, I had a wicked cold, and so I'm sitting on the, in the window seat in like sweatpants and a shitty shirt, no makeup, hair back, and you know, my lap is full of snot rags and lozenges, I just feel so <laughs> gross. And of course, of all fucking train rides in my entire goddamn life, this really cute guy who's totally age appropriate and gainfully employed is like, eh, is this seat taken? And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> So he sits down next to me and he's a friggin' delight. And for four hours, we have a great conversation. Um, he's not really my usual type, but I try to broaden my horizons. Um, he was sort of short and like nerdy looking with glasses and very preppy. And I mostly date like a heavy set Teamsters. <laughs> but, but I was like, you know, Selena, give him a shot, hear him out. Um, so uh, we have a great conversation for four hours and we really hit it off and he works in media and I work in publishing and like, oh, it's, you know, really cool. And it, 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 I was like, oh, this is really neat. And also what a cool story of how you met someone. Like I'm a real sucker for that kind of stuff. Um, so we pull into Penn Station uh, and we exchange business cards. And he's like, you know, I, I'd love to ask you to have a drink sometime. And I was like, oh, great. You know, that sounds wonderful. And I'm thinking, okay, we can go out once I'm healthy again and I apply makeup uh, and I could redeem myself, you know, and then, then we could really see what could happen. So a few weeks later, he emails me, which I was like, a few weeks. Hmm. Um, but I was glad that I, the cold worked its way out of me. I was healthy as a horse. I was like, okay, I'm ready to make a date, you know? So he's like, hey, Selena, I'd love to take you out for drinks. Let's meet at a wine bar on the Upper West Side where I used to, the neighborhood I used to work in where he lived. Um, let's make a date to go to a wine bar. And I'm like, great. So we make a date for a Tuesday. The weekend before that, I, uh, Saturday night, I was drunk as a skunk at a bar on Avenue C, because uh, I am a very self-destructive stand-up comedian in addition to being a uh, goddamn delight. Um, so I am extremely drunk at a bar on Avenue C, and it's one of these ones where the bathroom is unisex downstairs, and I go to use the bathroom, and I do one of these dumb shits where you kind of knock while you're opening the door. Um, but the door is like an inch open. So I'm just sort of like, and as I'm sort of pushing it open, someone's in there, 
and they slam on the door and my finger gets caught in the, the door jam, like in, yeah. And I'm sorry, this is the part of the story where some people are like, please shut up. But, <laughs> um, but my finger gets caught and the person keeps slamming. And I'm like, this person must be a linebacker because it's unisex and they are not stopping. They're just like, poof, poof. And I'm screaming, I'm like, I'm caught, I'm caught, I'm caught, please stop. And they just keep slamming the door. And I was like, what kind of cocaine do you got in there? You know? <laughs> so they just keep slamming it. Finally, I pull my finger out. I'm sorry, it was actually this one, my freaking pointer finger. I pull my finger out and literally, it's like my nails ripped off. And I'm bleeding profusely because you have a shitload of veins and capillaries in your fingers. So they just bleed like crazy. And I'm like, oh my God. So I run upstairs to, because I was like, I think I need to go to the ER. Oh my, like I'm bleeding so badly. And I run upstairs and there's all these like tough ass bar backs who are like dudes, you know? And I'm like, ah! And they're like, ah! <laughs> I mean, this is like the worst thing anyone has ever seen. And I'm like, I know! Oh my God, it's so painful. It's weird, you know? Like, but thankfully I'm so drunk that I'm just like, oh God, what? Well, Saturday night, you know? Like, so these sweet bar backs give me a towel to wrap it up in, and I'm just like, well, I guess I'll go home. Good night. <laughs> so I go back to my apartment and just fall asleep. And I'm like, I'll sleep it off. What? Like, I wake up the next morning. I was like, oh, God, this. <laughs> so I was living on the Upper East Side at the time. I go to Lenox Hill. They are delightful. They give me a tetanus shot because they're like, when was the last time you had a tetanus shot? I was like, who knows? And they're like, don't worry. You can never have too many. Turns out. So good to know. You can just, you know, don't worry. Unlimited tetanus shots. It's okay. Um, <laughs> So they give me a tetanus shot, and, uh, and they're like, you know, this is nail avulsion complete, which is like the fancy word for your nail got ripped off. Um, <laughs> and they, for, they're like, okay, for a few days, you're going to have to wear this really like pretty thick wrapping around this finger um, just to keep it from bonking into things and being in pain. And so they wrap it around, and it's really, I mean, it's pretty huge. <laughs> and I don't want to put my finger down because blood will rush to the tip, and that's very painful. So I really want to keep it up like this. <laughs> and I look like I'm wearing a foam number one finger. I'm just like, what's up? <laughs> number one, always up top. You know, like, I look like a total idiot. Oh, and I'm going on a Tuesday date with this guy from the train. Cool. He's going to think I'm totally cool and normal now that I don't have a cold anymore. <laughs> so I don't know why I didn't cancel the date. I was like, let's do it. <laughs> Only live once. So I, he shows up to the wine bar and I'm like, hey. And he's like, hey. I'm like, uh, long story. Um, so we're drinking wine and I don't know why it didn't occur to me. Like, Selena, maybe just drink wine out of your left hand and keep this low, you know. But I'm drinking wine out of his hand and I'm just like, Poof. Like, I keep smashing my help, myself with the foam finger. Like, everything about it was terrible. Like, it was so ridiculous. And I was like, God, I keep screwing up with this guy and he seems great. So... A couple weeks later, he's like, hey, you want to go on an, another date? And by that point, at least the foam finger was off. Um, I had literally no nail, so I looked like I had a skin finger. Like, it was the <laughs> weirdest thing. <laughs> um, but I did have use of all my digits, which, I mean, you don't know what you got till it's gone. Like, <laughs> it's pretty nice to be like, 10 fingies, here we go, you know? So, so I'm like, okay, this date, I'm going to redeem myself. Uh, all my, everything's working, I'm not sick, all my digits work, let's go, you know? So we go out <laughs> for wine and pizza, and a okay, I got stomach like steel. I could eat anything, drink anything. Um, somehow, apparently not on this night. What? <laughs> I have. I am not lactose intolerant. Okay, but we go to a pizza place and we eat and drink, and it's really fun. And then he's like, "Hey, you want to go back to my place and watch a DVD?" Uh, this is a couple years ago. Um, <laughs> of Gone Baby Gone, and I am from Boston, and like every dumb mass hole you've ever met, I am obsessed with all Boston films. <laughs> Uh, and I will ramble on about uh, whether the Kennedy accent is correct. Uh, the fact that there are actually two Boston accents. One is, uh, you know, the Brahmin, one is the Bill Rucka. Anyway, I love a Boston movie, you know? So I was like, gone, baby, gone. God, you know my cat. Let's do it. So we finish dinner and we're walking to his apartment. And as we're walking, I feel like a stabbing pain in my stomach. And I'm like, oh no. Like, and it's the kind of stabbing pain where I was like, okay. Diarrhea is imminent. <laughs> uh, you are going to take a liquid deuce and the clock is ticking, you know? So choose your own adventure, kiddo. Like, you got two options. One, try to say a quick goodnight and scramble into the woods. 
Because <laughs> Central Park close by, or a Starbucks, you know, if you can find one, good luck. <laughs> or two, go home with this guy. But get it going quick. Like, and I knew he lived in a fourth floor walk up, and I was like, I don't know if we have time. Like, <laughs> so I was like, I don't think I can find a Starbucks in time and get the code for the bathroom. Like, I gotta go to his house. So I go to his apartment and I'm leading like I'm leading a like Girl Scout troop hiking trip. I'm like, let's go! Come on! Like, and we're going up the fourth floor walk. I'm like, come on, slow bones, let's go! Like hustling up these four flights of stairs. Go, 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 you know. Finally we get to his apartment. I'm like, I gotta pop in the restroom. <laughs> and he has a beautiful apartment, and there's actually a few rooms in it, which was shocking to me. Um, yet, I go into the bathroom, the door is about as thick as a, sl a piece of paper. <laughs> Thank you, great New York, I love ya. Um, and he breaks all the rules of social etiquette and just sits on a couch outside of the bathroom. Which I was like, no, 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 what you do is you go to the farthest point in the apartment. Even if it's a closet, you go there because you gotta find something. Come on, you know? So he's just like sitting right there and I was like, oh no, like, this is gonna happen, I'm gonna drop a liquid deuce. And there ain't no stopping it, you know? And I didn't even know the trick, you turn on the water, but everyone knows what's going on, come on, you know? But I was just like, I gotta do it. So I go into his bathroom, barely make it, drop, like, terrible, terrible diarrhea. It sounds like, like pouring water onto water with fart noises. Like, it, like it's, it's so bad, and I'm like, I can't believe how many times I could screw this up with this guy, ah! And so then, I come out of the bathroom, he's like, I'm gonna pop in there. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> awesome. So finally, finally he comes out. Yeah. I was just like, I want to like you, but the universe keeps screwing this up. Finally, we start the movie and we watch it and I know there's gonna be a quick round two for me. So I'm just trying to kind of lock up my body with like a yoga pose of like tightening up, you know? Cause I'm like, uh, the movie's gone, baby gone. My diarrhea is not gone, baby gone, you know? Um, and I know, I'm like, if I can try to last 20 minutes, maybe I won't seem totally weird. I'll be like, nah, drank too much liquids, right? So. I am able to do that. I'm like, gotta pop back in. <laughs> so many glasses of water at dinner, I guess. Uh, and so I go back in, and as I'm headed in, he's like, wait, wait, oh, Selena, Selena, you want me to pause the movie? I was like, no! <laughs> Keep it running! <laughs> After the movie was over, I left, and I felt bad because I just never, ever responded to his calls or texts, but I was just, like, too embarrassed. But I did go back to trying to always look my best. <laughs> you know? Thank you so much. I'm Selena. Yeah, I'm still